Hey, MJ here for MyNextTablet.com. Today with a couple of tips and tricks for the Samsung Galaxy Tab A 2019 tablet series. All right, I have both current Galaxy Tab A 2019 tablets in front of me. The first one is the 10.1 inch Galaxy Tab A 2019 and the other one the 8 inch Galaxy Tab A 2019 with S Pen. And in this video, I want to give you a couple of tips and tricks for both tablets because both tablets are very similar except for their display size have pretty much the same internal hardware or very similar internal hardware. Both are running Android 9 and both have the One UI running on top. The One UI is the own interface from Samsung. These tips and tricks are relatively basic, but usually it's really nice to see what you can do with the tablet and then you know if you want to do that as well or if you don't need it. Um, however, if you have been working with Android and especially Samsung devices a lot for the last couple of years, then you are probably familiar with most of these features. By the way, in this video, I'm not talking about the S Pen for the 8 inch version because I've got a separate video for that online already. So if you're interested in the pen, then check out that video on mynexttablet.com and this YouTube channel. All right, the first tip and trick is tab to wake. Both tablets don't have a fingerprint scanner and the facial recognition of the Galaxy Tab A 8 inch is not super secure because it's just using the front facing camera. And yeah, but I figured I don't actually need a fingerprint scan or anything, especially on the 8 inch version because I'm just using it at home. And then an easier way to unlock it is tap to wake. You just double tap on the screen and then the screen gets turned on. You can see a couple of notifications already if you have any and then it's yeah, easier, faster to unlock. And to enable it, you go into the settings. Then you go to advanced features motion and gestures and just yeah go on double tap to wake and then it's turned on. All right, a very common question I get is how do you take a screenshot with a certain tablet? And that's usually pretty easy. On most Android devices, you can press the power button and the volume down button, press them at the same time and then a screenshot is taken as you can see here. However, with Samsung devices, you can usually also take your palm and swipe over it from the side and then another screenshot is taken. By the way, once you took a screenshot, you can then open it in the gallery or in other apps and you can always edit it a bit. Well, to turn on this little gesture, you go to the settings, advanced features, motion and gestures, and then you can turn on palm swipe to capture and that's the screenshot feature. If it's not turned on already by default, I'm not sure. Well, that's where you find it. All right, if you're using the tablet at night a lot, it might be worth it to turn on the blue light filter. That's filtering out a blue light and apparently will make you go to sleep easier because the blue light is not shining into your eyes. Um, I'm pretty sure that is the case that helps with sleeping. I'm using it on my phone all the time and I think it helps. I hope it helps. Maybe it's just a placebo effect. Anyway, you might want to turn it on and for that you just swipe down the quick settings and turn on the blue light filter. It's very simple. Everything is then a bit yellowish. So if you're editing photos, that might not be the best thing to do. But otherwise, I think it is a bit yeah, more comfortable for your eyes, especially at night if you're in a dark room, then especially if you're reading white text, it's probably a bit easier for your eyes. Another feature Samsung built in is a dark mode, which is called night mode. And once you turn that on, all the white parts are turned black and that again should save your eyes from some eye straining. And um, the sad thing about it is that not all apps are turned dark. For example, if you go into the calendar, let me quickly find it. Where do I have it? There we go. The calendar is nice and dark, so it's easy to read, especially at night. However, if we go into the browser, for example, that one, is not turned dark and the same goes for YouTube, for instance. Then it won't be dark either, as you can see. Now YouTube has their own dark mode and you can turn it on if you want, but yeah, it's not as nicely implemented as on some other systems. However, if you want, and especially if you're using the Samsung apps a lot, then it might be worth it. You can go to display and then you can go to night mode and then you can schedule it and then the 
night mode is turned on automatically when the sun is setting. All right, let's take a look at the split screen view. That is a feature that has been a part of Samsung tablets for many years now, even before Google officially introduced it with Android Nougat. It has been a part of Samsung tablets really for a very long time. However, with this generation, they changed it and I got questions about it already. How do you open two apps side by side? In the past, you could just long press the recent apps button and then you can select them and move them to the sides, but that is not working anymore. Instead, now again, you have to long press this recent apps buttons, but then you have to long press this icon above the preview screen, long press it, and then you can select open in split screen view, and then you can open two apps side by side. And that works pretty well on the Galaxy Tab A 2019 series. However, it's not as easy as it used to be. That's a bit disappointing. But well, you can open two apps side by side, as you can see here. Another interesting feature is that you can open apps in separate windows. You do that by going to the recent apps button again, then long pressing the icon there, and then open in pop-up view. And then we are getting actually a window with the app open, similar to what you would get with a desktop operating system. And you can open several apps, not only one, not only two, really several app, apps in separate windows like here. That is a feature that looks very similar to Samsung DeX, that is a desktop modus for the Galaxy Tab S series. The Galaxy Tab A series does not support Samsung DeX. However, you can still connect a keyboard and a mouse and then use these separate windows if you need to do a lot of multitasking. So yeah, what's quite interesting as well is if you just go to the home, they are closed to this little floating thing here. If you press on it, you can always open them up again. So we could have them closed and then we go maybe to the gallery and then we can open them on top of the gallery. We've got two apps open on top of another app. That's quite useful, mainly if you're working, probably not for entertainment purposes, but if you're working, you can have Word, the browser, and maybe something else open at the same time, maybe a music player or something. All right, the battery life on both tablets is pretty decent, but not outstanding, but pretty good. Um, however, if you want to extend the battery life, you can. There are several power saving modes built in, and to turn them on, you go to the settings, then you go down to device care, press on it, then you go to battery, and then you can have the power mode here. You click on it and then you can choose between optimized, which is the standard, medium power saving and maximum power saving. And obviously the maximum power saving saves the most of battery life. And they do that by restricting background data. So the apps in the background won't get updated. That's important to note. For example, if you have Facebook open the background, you probably won't get that many notifications anymore. And the CPU speed is limited to a maximum of 70%. So that's really important to know too, if you're doing some CPU intensive tasks. But that's how you can extend the battery life if you're running low and just have to have it on for just a couple of more hours or maybe even just minutes, then you can turn those on. All recent Samsung tablets have a micro SD card slot. This one has one here and you cannot mount them as internal storage. However, you actually can move apps and games and obviously normal data to those micro SD cards. To do that, you go into the settings and then you go to apps and then you can select an app, maybe a game, maybe a big one like Asphalt 9. You go on there, go to storage and then you can go for storage use. It's on the internal storage now. You can go to change and then you can move it to the SD card. So if you're running low on storage, that's something you can do. I'm moving Asphalt 9 to the micro SD card now and that saves up some space on the internal storage. So that's a really useful feature that's built into the Galaxy Tab A series. All right, the next feature is something that has been a part of Android um, for quite a while. You can connect pretty much all accessories via the USB-C port here. Both tablets have one. And 
things you can connect are keyboards. You can connect a mouse that I've done here right now. You can connect an external hard drive, external SSD, a full-size SD card reader, what I did here, or you can connect other USB accessories. Like here, I've got the wireless transmitter for my wireless mouse connected right now. You can also connect the mouse and keyboard using Bluetooth and almost use those like you would with a desktop machine. Usually, most of these accessories are supported with Android. And you can see here right now, I've got my mouse connected and I can just use it normally. And I'm in the My Files app, which is this one. And then I can, this is a file explorer. I can just go through my internal storage, but I can also go through the storage of the S micro SD card that's inside the tablet right now, or the external storage, with, which is this one. And yeah, I can just scroll through it and see everything like I would be able to see on a full working machine. I can transfer files and so on. I don't have that many on here right now. And yeah, that's something really useful that you can do with Android tablets. All right, Samsung has a multiple user feature built in, which means you can add several users. That's very useful if you're using this tablet as a family tablet, for example, at home, and maybe your partner or your kids use the tablet too, then maybe you don't want to see all their stuff and maybe they shouldn't see everything that you're doing. And you can just open separate accounts for them. For that, you just swipe down the quick, quick settings here and press this little avatar icon out of the box, it's just uh, a yellow blue icon, a yellow icon, obviously not a blue icon. And um, you click on it, that's my account here. You can, first of all, you can start a guest account. That's very something very temporary. If you have a friend over and he wants to play with it just for a couple of hours and then never again, then just open a guest account for them. Or you can open a real account for them and then you're switching um, to a new user, what I'm doing right now. And then they can have their own apps, their own data, and so on. And um, if you want, you can obviously password protect your account or pin protect your account, and then they won't be able to access it. So right now, I'm really starting a new instance of Android with One UI here. The setup is completely new. You're setting up as a completely new user. So that's very interesting if you have a family and several people are using it. All right, something that's very useful if you have kids too is the kids mode. At least it can be useful if you have very young kids. For that, you swipe down the quick settings again, then you swipe over here and go to kids home. And then it gets activated. If you're doing it for the first time, like I'm doing here, you just have to accept some th things and then you can download a couple of apps. I tried them mainly on the bigger one and the Galaxy Tab S5e and they're really only useful for very young kids. And there's some drawing apps and some weird games where you can design your character. But I think most kids who are a bit older, the ones who are in elementary or primary school already, they probably want to use the apps from the Google Play Store and not this kids mode. It's really only something for very young kids, I would say. Another feature built into One UI is gesture support. You can replace those three typical Android buttons with gestures. To do that, you go into the quick settings again, you swipe over, and then you press on navigation bar. And then it's changed into gestures. There's a little introduction here. And now you can do this for the back button, this for the recent apps button, and then this is the home button. So basically you're just replacing those with gestures, but after a while you might be able to yeah, get used to it much faster, but I'm not sure. Um, I used it for a while and then I stuck to the buttons though. So yeah, you have to see what you prefer. All right, these have been a couple of tips and tricks for the new Samsung Galaxy Tab A 2019 series. If there will be more tablets of the Galaxy Tab A series released this year, then I'm sure the features will be very similar. So um, I'm sure they will um, be the same for that one too. And yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to write me below. And if there's any feature that I missed or a feature that we all should know about, then just type it in the comments, I'm sure Myself definitely and others are interested in what features you found because there are quite a few 
built into the One UI. If you own this tablet, it's really worth it to go through all the settings one by one and just see what you want to use and whatnot. There are some that I didn't talk about like Bixby. I just didn't find it that useful. And yeah, these are my tips and tricks for the Galaxy Tab A series. If you liked this video, please subscribe to this channel. I'm testing pretty much all tablets that are released almost worldwide. And I'm Anjay for MyNextTablet.com. Thanks for watching and see you next time.